After studying this module, we shall be able to know the distinction between trade creation and trade diversion, evaluate regionalism versus multilateralism, analyze the trends in regional trade agreements. Trade creation and trade diversion. Regional economic integrations are formed to reduce or even eliminate the trade barriers by removing the tariff and even non-tariff barriers among the member nations. The immediate impact regional economic integration can be seen as trade creation and trade diversion. Trade creation is a new trade that comes with the formation of economic integration and is said to be beneficial for the member nations in terms of national welfare. Trade diversion, on the other hand, is shifting of the trade from the non-member nation to the member nation and may not always beneficial in terms of the national welfare. We can analyze trade creation and trade diversion as an impact of the trade liberalization by applying Winner's Model of Free Trade Agreement FTA. The model is based on certain assumptions. First, it is based on the partial equilibrium that is studying the effects of the free trade agreement with respect to the certain product or industry and then later extending the same into the entire trade sectors. Second, there are only three countries X, Y and Z. X is a small country in economic sense and takes prices as given and exports and imports to Y and Z at a price prevailing in their respective markets. Third, X treated as a domestic country is considered to have homogeneous demand and supply curve. Country X before entering into free trade agreement has a MFN specific tariff that is same tariff is applied on both Y and Z. Fourth, Z is said to be more efficient producing goods at the cheaper price than the Y. Fifth, X and Y form a free trade agreement. Hence, X and Y both become member, partner nations country and Z is a non-member country. Before entering into FTA, with the given supply and demand, the domestic country X will buy the product from the non-member country Z. Country Z is more efficient. The price offered by Z is ZP plus tariff, which is lower than the price YP plus tariff. The domestic demand for the country X before entering into FTA is QD1, which is met partly by the domestic supply QS1 and rest is importing from the country Z at price ZP plus tariff. However, after entering into FTA price of the product offered by the country Y is YP. Due to the fall in prices, the domestic demand rises from QD1 to QD2. In order to meet the current demand domestic producers supply QS2 and rest is imported from the country Y at price YP. As an outcome of FTA, imports increase from QS1 minus QS2, but local production shrinks. Trade creation is shifting of less efficient domestic production in favor of more efficient member country production. The net trade creation can be measured as the difference between QD2 minus QS2 and QD1 minus QS1. On the other hand, FTA may also lead to trade diversion. Country X shifts its import from more efficient non-member nation Z in favor of less efficient member country Y. And QD1 minus QS1 are displayed by imports from the member country Y. This is mainly due to the cheaper import from the member country Y. The welfare effects of FTA for the home country can be seen as the net change in the producer surplus, consumer surplus and government revenue. The welfare effects are summarized in the following table. 
A denotes the displacement of the domestic production to the efficient imports. Therefore, it signifies a loss to the domestic producer, but gain to the consumer as he or she can now avail the same product at the cheaper price. B signifies the gain to the consumer as he can switch from the high cost domestic supply to the lower cost imports. C plus E refers to the revenue received by the government as tariff on the product imported from the non-member country. E refers to the net efficiency loss of buying from an inefficient member nation. D gain to the consumer as he able to consume more with the given low import price. B plus G minus E signifies the net welfare to the country. The net welfare B plus G minus E effects can be more positive if domestic tariff rate were high before entering into FTA. Less is the difference between YP and ZP. Domestic demand and supply is more sensitive to fall in price. Larger is the increase in the import after formation of FTA and more countries are participating in FTA. Therefore, the net welfare of an economy can be measured by whether such regional economic integration has an impact on the trade creation and trade diversion. Therefore, we can say that the trade creation is shifting of less efficient domestic production in favor of more efficient member country production and trade diversion is shifting of more efficient outsider import in favor of the less efficient member country import with the formation of free trade agreement. Regionalism and Multilateralism Nations around the globe are pursuing the goal of the trade liberalization. There are various tools used to achieve this objective. One of such approach is multilateralism. Multilateralism is said to be a comprehensive trade policy adopted by all the members of WTO. The other tools used for the trade liberalization is regionalism which includes formation of preferential trade agreements, free trade agreements, custom union, common markets and economic union. In case of regionalism, countries which are party to the integration offer more favorable treatment to the member countries in context of the trade than to the rest of the world, including other members of WTO. Multilateralism. The wave of the trade liberalization started post World War II. GAWT, GATT, Journal Agreement on Trade and Tariff, now succeeded by WTO, represent a powerful arm of worldwide liberalization of trade. All agreements under GATT and WTO are accepted by all members simultaneously to reduce trade barriers. Multilateralism is said to be a comprehensive trade policy adopted by all members of WTO. Multilateralism started in the field of trade in goods but subsequently added broader areas of the trade in services, investment, agricultural products, intellectual property rights, etc. It aims to work towards totality, independence and integrated approach. The MFN most favored nation principle is a cornerstone of multilateralism conceived after World War II. It tries to defy power based policy of regionalism. It is based on the frame set that the trading rights do not depend on the individual participant. But the best excess condition that have been conceded to one country must automatically be extended to all other participants in the system. Multilateralism works as a system where action of one party affects all the parties and each party acknowledges loyalty to the single whole. Regionalism. Regionalism refers to economic integration between two or more countries to eliminate trade 
and non-trade barriers for cross-border movement of goods and services among the signatories. The signatories or member countries try to reduce or even eliminate tariff barriers among each other. However, each country is allowed to have its own trade policy for non-member country. Parties to the regional trade agreement offer each other more favorable treatment in context of trade than to rest of the world. This is contrary to MFN principle implying regionalism do not support the non-discriminatory approach. Both the approaches represent movements towards a free trade and have overlapping agendas but both have their own pros and cons. The number of regional trade agreements notified and in force to WTO are rising across the globe and are even supporting trade liberalization. They are easy to form and negotiate. But regional trade agreements are liberalizing trade among member nations only and are raising protection trade barriers against the non-member countries. Multilateralism provides for a broader platform for trade liberalization where all members of WTO worldwide stimulate the movement of the trade. Trends of the Regional Trade Agreement Global Trends of the Regional Trade Agreement With the emergence of the large number of RTAs, the entire world can be seen as a global market for trade and investment, as RTAs are facilitating the economies to reduce and even remove tariff and non-tariff barriers for free flow of goods, services and factors of production. Since 1990, we have seen a steep rise in the number and the depth of RTA around the world. The number of these RTA have been more than quadrupled since 1990, rising to around 260 RTAs in force and notified by late 2012 WTO database. Regional trade agreements are among economies to generally reduce and ultimately remove tariff and non-tariff barrier for the free flow of the goods and services and even factors of production between each other. Economies entering into regional trade agreements experience reduction in the price of the distribution and consumption of the goods and services, stimulation in the flow of goods and services, factors of production, larger markets, new and better trading, and even investment avenues with the goal to increase the combined economic productivity and the efficiency of the economies. The dynamics of the RTA can be studied to analyze the significance of RTAs in the global trade and its implications. Moreover, the countries whether developed or developing are entering into some form of regional integration to strengthen both on the political as well as the economic front. Distribution of the regional economic integrations notified to WTO and in force by type of agreements. Several level of economic integration are possible, starting from least integration to most integrated. They are a free trade agreement, a custom union, common market, economic union, political union and even earlier stage integration like partial scope agreements. However, different degree of unification of the economic policies in terms of integration can be seen on the world map. Moreover, as the international trade and investment levels continue to rise, the world economies are experiencing a shift from shallow integration to the deeper integration among economies. And Economic integration takes place in the stages beginning with the lowering and removal or even reduction of the barriers to the trade, even investment and culminating in the creation of economic union. However, the member nations can notify to WTO by entering into following types of RTA. A free trade agreement under the provision of GATT for trade in goods. A custom union under the provisions of GATT 
for trade in goods. An economic integration agreement under the provision of GATS for trade in services. A partial scope agreement, partial scope which covers only certain product. Distribution of the regional economic integration based upon type of the notification to WTO. A WTO member country entering into the regional trade agreement enjoys more favorable conditions for trade than the WTO members are however permitted to enter into regional trade agreements under specified conditions which are spelled out in the three set of rules. First, RTA formed under Article 24 of GATT. Article 24 of the GATT, an important provision of GATT or WTO, provide the formation and the operation of the custom union and free trade areas covering trade in goods and interim agreements among the member nations. Maximum number of RTAs formed is covered under this provision. This provision supports trade in goods. Second, RTAs formed under enabling cause decision on differential and most favorable treatment, reciprocity and fuller participation of developing countries. The provision of enabling clause refers to the preferential trade agreements in trade in goods among developing countries. This provision tried to protect the developing countries and support MFN principle. Third, RTA forms under Article 5 of the GATT the provision governs RTAs in the areas of trade and services for both developed and developing country. There is rise in the number of RTAs formed under this provision. The provision supports trade and services. The table given below depicts the rise in RTAs formed both in goods and services. The rise in RTAs for trade and service shows an increase in the landscape of RTAs. RTAs are coming up with the broader policy and enlarged dimensions. The new generation RTA are going beyond traditional tariff elimination policy. However, they are strengthening by including rules on investment, environment, intellectual property rights, labor, etc. Regional distribution of RTAs. Table depicts intra-region and extra-regional distribution of RTAs across the globe. Along with the Europe, even East Asia is becoming a hub of regional trade agreements. Regional distribution of RTAs indicate the significant emergence of the global market for trade and investment. Let us summarize. Regional trade agreements can lead to the trade creation and trade diversion. Trade creation is shifting of less efficient domestic production in favor of more efficient member country production. Trade diversion is shifting of more efficient outsider import in favor of less efficient member country import. Multilateralism referred to a trade policy obligation among all members of WTO, whereas regionalism is broadly referred as a free trade agreement among a subset of nation. A rise in number and depth of RTAs across the globe can be seen.